Hello, sewing friends. Welcome to So Tell Me. This is a monthly show uh, where I interview sewing industry experts and sewing enthusiasts just like you. Hi, I'm Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew.com. And like I said, tonight we're here for some good sewing talk. This is where sewing enthusiasts gather to be inspired and learn to make the most of their machines. So tonight I have a really, really special guest. Those of you that got the, um, the notice ahead of time know who's coming, but I'm going to um, tell you just a little bit about my guest here. My special guest tonight is Angela Wolf, the one and only Angela Wolf. And I know many of you know her already, and um, so she's a familiar face to you. But if I have somebody here who doesn't know Angela yet, you're going to in for a real treat learning all about Angela and um, gaining from her experience and all that she has to share with all of us who love our sewing so much. Angela is the familiar face of the popular It's So Easy TV PBS show where she's been the anchor for 21 seasons. She's a brother brand ambassador, an online educator, pattern designer, and president of ABO Apparel. And those are just a few of her titles, her real true titles. Um, if you visit AngelaWolf.com, you'll see the whole lineup of all that Angela offers to keep sewing enthusiasts educated and entertained. So without further ado, let me bring on my dear special friend, Angela Wolf. Hi, Angela. Hi, jo Hi Joanne. It's so nice to see you. It's so much fun to have you here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We're all just thrilled to um, have you here with us tonight as a just kind of a casual little talk about sewing type of visit, right? Isn't that what we love to do? So that is going to be great. And I see uh, I see the wolf pack rolling in and a lot of the fans from both you and I on It's So Easy. It's so nice to see you all. Thank you for showing up yeah. on a Monday evening. This is fantastic. <laughs> so, so many of the regulars are here. So hello, regulars. Uh, Clovis, Arnell, Janice, Susan, June, uh, Carrie's here, Josie Sews, uh, Connie's here. Hey, Connie, great to have you here. Um, Paula. Uh, Phyllis is here. Janice, did I say Janice already? Yeah, I think Janice was at the top of the line. She was not going to miss this show for uh, sure. I um, see that. I, I see Karina, by the way. Karina, what time yeah. is it? Here? Oh, yeah. Wow, Karina. <laughs> and um, Sandy's here uh, from Grand, Rip Grand Rapids, Michigan. And Bobby's here from Oregon. Um, Pete's here from I don't know where, but <laughs> saying hi to both of us. So yeah, this is like watching oh, It's So Easy, Arnell says. Pete is, that's Glenda. Glenda and Pete, they're in California unless they're on some fabulous cruise oh, somewhere. Wow. <laughs> okay, great. Karina, let's see. Karina's telling us what time it is. 1 a.m. So you, Oh you, my gosh, Karina, you get a little hug. You do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, this chat's going really, really, really fast. But let me bring up a few a few people here that want to say that want to say hi. All right, we got oh, we got Rebecca here from California. And Bonnie's here from Pennsylvania. Let's see. Wow, we got oh, we just got it's just rolling in like like crazy, Angela. This is going, <laughs> it's going way too fast for me tonight. This is going to be fun, though. It's so nice to see you all. <laughs> this is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Well, I told you a little bit about Angela. Let me just say um, a little bit about how we met. Um, Angela, I don't I can't even count the years how long we've known each other now, but it's been a it's been a pretty long time. But I don't know if you remember the very first time we met. I do. We were at a brother convention. Mm -hmm. And brother had um, hired you to do some tremendous videos on new products. I happened to be sitting in the front seat. And lo and behold, just before the program was about to start, you sat next to me. And you came <laughs> up on the screen and I looked over at you and I said, hey, that's you. <laughs> I think we maybe had lunch that day and dinner that night and made fast friends. So when I... That is right. That was fantastic. And that was in Nashville, actually. That was yep. 
Very cool. That was uh, some time ago, and we spent lots and lots and lots of times together after that. So I'm I'm really happy we've been able to to do so many different things together and and see each other so often. Even though we don't get to see each other in person as often as we used to, this is certainly the the next best thing, right? It's awesome. <laughs> it's certainly the next best thing. Yeah, absolutely. So we still got well, we still got some more people coming in here from all over the place. Let's just pull up a few and say hello. That is just fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So happy to have everybody here tonight. Oh my, this is great. So anyway, um, I know that I've got a lot of questions <laughs> to ask you tonight. Uh, some of the things that maybe you've been asked before, maybe some people know some of these stories, but again, we want to, we want to kind of do the little, little bit of a tell all for, for everybody. And naturally, we want to answer your questions as well. So if you have some, uh, pop them in the chat. If they're really like, oh, I got to ask it right now, get it in there. And hopefully I, I will catch it. If I don't catch it, maybe Angela will. But you know how hard that is when it's scrolling through so fast. So we will definitely have time at the end. So make sure if you, you, know, you have a question you want to ask, um, try to get it in and maybe get it in at the end when we'll be able to see a little bit more um, what comes in here. Okay. All right. So Angela, um, you know, the first question I always like to ask everybody that sews is what got you started? Where did it all come from? <laughs> Were you influenced by somebody? Did you, you know, did you have somebody that, that, that mentored you at all? Uh, how old were you when you started? Just give us a little bit of those tidbits. You know, um, it's funny you say that. I, I think one of the youngest photos that I know of is, let's see, I think I was four and my mom always sewed. She had the big sewing machine on the table and I was the oldest of five kids. And so she, I wanted to sew and she's like, you can't sew by yourself. <laughs> so I made a little scarf to go around my head and I still have a photo of that. It was polka dots, of course. And then after that, I wanted to sew. And so the first actual garment I made, I think was in maybe seventh grade, uh, they had like a summer camp and I made a skirt and a vest that had binding all around it. And I still laugh because the skirt, I was such the biggest tomboy ever. <laughs> I think skirt was probably the only option. Otherwise, there's no way I would have worn a skirt or made a skirt. But I did. And it was very cute. And from there, you know, Joanne, I don't know about you, but you love fashion design as well. And I could not understand patterns because I didn't go to school for it. Uh, my mom pretty much sewed on just a whim, like not technical. I couldn't understand the patterns at all. So okay. I would lay on fabric and my sisters would trace me. And that's how I started designing. And that was when I was 15 and I never stopped. <laughs> that's amazing. Did you have, did you have sewing in school? Did, did they actually have it in your, in your school? <laughs> actually, uh, they did, but that was too girly for me. I was like, <laughs> that's a very loose term. I took woodworking. <laughs> Oh, my. I wanted to have my name in wood. So, uh, yeah, so I never took sewing. And then when I went to college, I went for engineering and then business, and I never took sewing there either. I just So I studied on my own, mostly from trial and error, but then, you know, just from whatever books, since that was pre-YouTube days, you couldn't go yeah. to YouTube. They're so lucky now. They can go to YouTube and watch either of us sewing or so many other people. Uh, but back then, not so much. Yeah, I I knew you. I I I know you know that you've you've taught yourself on an awful lot of things. I think that's one of the things that makes you such a great teacher yourself is because you you know what it takes to really absorb something and then be able to to teach it to others. So that's really great. When you want to learn something yourself, I'm curious. Uh, what's your favorite way to learn? Whether it's you know sewing or anything else. Do you like to read books? Do you like to watch videos? Do you yeah. like to, you know, maybe do a little bit of everything or, or just I'm kind of a big book collector? I don't mean to collect them, but I love reading. So if I wasn't able to get back to my studio today, I was going to be live in my living room and you would have seen it looks like a library behind me. I love books. I don't know if it's just touching the pages. I mean, I know that I still have ebooks and videos, but there's something about a book, especially with sewing, where you can see the beautiful pictures. You can see, you know, I don't know. I just I'm, I'm a book person. Yeah, you, I, I agree 100%. I, you're, you're absolutely right. There's nothing like having that, that resource too, that you can go back to and, and you, you know, you almost can like picture what page it was on so that when you want to get back to it, you can, you can go there and, and find it. Well, 
And you know, the other thing, Joanne, even a lot of the books, when I first, when I first got out of college, I met Lynn actually right after college, uh, which is why I'm still in St. Joe, Michigan, because we eventually got married. But, you know, I decided to start my own business at that time, which was pretty risky to start a custom apparel and alteration business when you really only sewed for yourself. So I had to buy every fitting book, every design book and test it on customers as well. But, you know, a lot of those books that I bought in 1994 and 1995, Wynn would haul the books to the boat. Like I'd bring four or five every weekend, <laughs> study while he's fishing, and then I would test it the whole next week. A lot of those books are still bestsellers for design. They were like the classic, perfect book for learning how to sew and design as yeah. a good source. Yeah, you you know, you're right. That's that's one of the, again, the, one of the beautiful things about sewing is it really is timeless and even though we learn new techniques and we've got new machines and all kinds of bells and whistles we can take advantage of, a lot of the basics, a lot of the tried and true basics hold as true today as they did years ago. So it's kind of fun even to collect those older um, older things. It is. I'm, I'm interested in seeing what some, um, some of our, our friends here, how they learned. Um, Cindy had it, uh, but uh, she took... She, they put the girls in auto mechanics. She had no choice. So that isn't that crazy? Wow. Oh, I, think, I think they put me, I was in cooking for a very brief period and you all know me, but people that do know me know that it is not my least favorite thing to do. So that's when I switched to woodworking. So I never, I, they never offered, well, they had sewing. I just didn't want to take it. And Janice started in elementary school and then had her mom oh, and her wow, yeah. teacher. Yeah, that's wonderful. That is so wonderful. Yep. And then I got to bring up uh, Darlene's comment. She says, Angela, that's why I love your patterns written in illustrations. And we're going to get a little bit more into, into your patterns um, a little bit later. But yeah, I would I would I would say an absolute ditto to that for sure. Let's see what Sharon Sharon. Um, she bought her first singer machine and showed showed her dad. Oh, and showed her dad how to use the machine to sew. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> That's pretty neat. I yeah. think, you, I mean, I'm a brother of Brandon Baxter, but this is before I ever met brother. But, I, you know, when she says that, my mom had a singer and it was in the little wood, you know, cabinet. It, very nice. And I don't know about you, Joanne, but when I when I went to college, I would literally haul that thing from dorm room, which, you know, how big those dorm rooms are. I mean, this, I'd rather have a sewing machine. I think on a guitar at that time, <laughs> then a bed. So, and then when I, once in college software and you move to like apartments, I brought that everywhere I went. Now, sometimes I'd be too busy studying and couldn't use it, but that was with me with a bundle of fabric, no matter mm -hmm. where I was. So would that have been just a straight stitch machine? Just a, yeah, no. Did it have some other stitches on it? It would do zigzag. So it had straight. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And it died <laughs> the last Right, like a week before I graduated from college, I was making a gown for a Christmas party out of gold lame of all things. <laughs> I didn't know a lot about fabric, but I just knew I liked the color and I wouldn't be caught dead in that dress nowadays. But I I was a lot smaller and younger at that time, so it was fine. But the uh, sewing machine was great and it died sewing that. So that's why my parents and grandparents bought me a sewing machine for graduation because they knew I was devastated that my sewing machine had died. It was Isn't my that something? <laughs> Wow. And, and yet, at that time, did you actually envision yourself? Like, you know, I mean, some little girls play with patterns and, and imagine themselves being pattern designers when they grow up. Was that anything in your mind at, at that time? I always wanted to be a fashion designer, always. But at that time, you didn't go to college for that, really. I mean, technically, I mean... My family said, you know, I don't know if you can make a living doing that. Maybe do that on the side. Why don't you get a business degree? Because at least you have a broader uh, in engineering. I loved math. I loved engineering. But then I just really didn't know what field I wanted to go into. So business was a safe, a safe way to have a college degree, to have the benefit of having that, you know, certificate and then see what happens. So I don't think I I really never thought to myself, I'm going to go into business and be a fashion designer. I just wanted to be a fashion designer and it just all fell into place. Yeah, I can I can see how all of that kind of kind of fit together for you, except the tomboy part that that's always a little bit of a mystery to me. But <laughs> but then we're going to talk about your 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 fishing side, too. And that might play into that as well. So. 
<laughs> oh my. So anyway, um, let me just mention too, if you are in the chat and you see a question that you can answer, you could do me a big favor by going ahead and answer that question because that'll, that'll solve some of the scrolling um, for me. So Angela, the next thing I was thinking about is uh, when we, you know, we, like we said, we both have a love for garment sewing. I would say, you know, if you were on a desert island and, and you can only take, you know, a few things with you, it would probably be something to make garments instead of pillows or crap or something like that. And you tell me, what would you take with you on a desert island? <laughs> well, as I love the sun and I love the water. So I like the desert island type thing, as long as it was a desert, like with the ocean around it. <laughs> I would have garments that I've sewn, of course, anything to sew um, and definitely have a bathing suit in there. <laughs> okay. It would be all knits, comfortable knit outfits and a sewing machine, a bunch of knits. Actually, a serger would have to be mandatory there and cover stitch machine. Those would be the three things. And I would be golden with a you golden. Are, <laughs> you are definitely, definitely an expert on knits. I'd love to do another show sometime where all we do is talk about maybe different fabric types or, or something like that. But if, if I were to ask you, like, what is your favorite garment to sew? Like, would it be a dress? Would it be a pair of jeans? Would it be top? I, it's, I know it's going to be probably a little bit of everything, but you know, you're real, like, what do you have the most fun making when you're, when you're in the process of sewing? What type of garment? You know, I, I really, like when you say that immediately in my head, three things pop in. So, and they're all about equal, but there's a reason I like all three. Knit, Knits, knit tops, like I'm wearing the Shirley right now, knits, leggings, anything like that are my absolute favorite. One, because I wear them immediately. It takes less than an hour or two, you know, even with fitting and stuff once you get the hang of it. And it's an instant, you know, it's kind of like an instant success. Like <laughs> a lot of times on my Wednesday, I have a live show on Wednesdays at 1.30 and I will, I challenged myself for a while um, I think I've taken a break for the last two weeks because I've been a little busy, but I would actually challenge myself to make a new top every Wednesday. So the big joke was I'd always have time to finish the top, but I'd never have time to hem it before the show. So that's where <laughs> I'll said, forget the hems. But and because I literally could walk in here at 10 o'clock, cut my garment, have it sewn, be wearing it by the 130 show, hemmed or not hemmed. Uh, and you're going to wear it all the time. It's casual. It's something you know, that you always wear. But then the other two things that are just also my favorite jeans, because I I'm short waisted with really long legs. So I have the hardest time buying store bought jeans. Either they're too big in one area, they're too tight in one other, the crotch goes up to my neck, you know, all those things that drive me crazy. So once you make your own jeans, it's hard to go back. And that's two. And three, I love couture jackets, even though we're not wearing a lot of jackets right now, or at least I'm not. I still love the couture Chanel light jacket. That is those three things together. Now, why do I say all three? I know you said only one. The jacket could take 100 hours. The jeans maybe take eight and the knits take a couple of hours or less. So it's a combination of where I'm not going to get bored. <laughs> I can get instant, instant gratification, but at the same time, I can finish a couture jacket in a couple weeks and have that to wear over one of those tops. So they all go together. Yep. So. And, and you wear them all together. And you and so I'm not surprised, I'm not surprised to hear that because you know, it, it really is that you enjoy doing all, every bit of all of those items. Cause it's just, yeah. it's sewing really is a journey, isn't it? I mean, you start with that, with nothing and you end up, you know, at a grand destination when you're able to, to, you know, put that item on, or if it's something you're making to give, give away to somebody. So. Well, and Joanne, if you have something that takes too long and you've, you're doing three couture jackets that take a hundred hours a piece, you're going to get, well, I don't know. I'm going to get bored. A squirrel is going to run by and I'm going to need to make something that I can wear that day. <laughs> but that's, that, that's, what's really neat about even your, your pattern line. I would have to say is that you've got the, the things that you could whip up in a couple hours. And then you've got the other really, you know, things that are, that are a little, are going to, stretch you a little bit more, you know, like your, your jackets and the classes that you offer with that. We're going to talk more about that in a few minutes, but all of that kind of ties together so that you can you know, do, do the quick fixes and get something done really fast, but then have other times when you're, you're really learning through the process of sewing and, and enjoying all that extra, extra right. things that you're doing. 
Definitely, definitely. Um, I, you know, I, I'm really curious to ask you this. So I don't, I've never heard anybody else ask you this question. Have you sewn for your husband, Win? I know you talk a lot about Win, and Win's a big part of of all that you do. But ha have you made um, clothes or anything like that for him? No, I'm embarrassed to say one thing, which I'll share just because I see it's most of the wolf pack here, but, and Wynn will attest to this. So first of all, when I started sewing, um, he was the youngest of six children. And not one time I was at one of his family dinners and his mom said, Wynn, I still have that shirt you made when you were in high school. I said, you know how to sew? <laughs> and he said, yeah. I go, you mean all these times when I was doing custom apparel and I'd have 12 gowns to make and I needed help hemming, you could have helped me. So that was kind of our joke. but. I did, I did not, I do not sew for him. Um, although now I will have his pants, but when I was running a full-time custom apparel business and alterations, I was so busy. You only have a certain amount of hours in the day and he needed some pants hemmed and he bought a suit and needed it tailored. And I still feel guilty about this, <laughs> but I took the pants to someone else to hem. I paid them because they actually charged less than I did and they had the time to do it. And I had a full list of customers. And then that suit that he got, he had it tailored. And for all of you that know, I am a huge perfectionist. You are too, Joanne. And so when he tried this suit on, I was like, oh my gosh. First of all, it's way too long. Secondly, they took in to tailor a suit. There's a lot of seams to tailor to make it proportional on the body. They took this overbearing suit on him and took it in only in the back seam. One side of the seam, like when they sewed it, you know, had fed faster than the other. You all know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. if you it. it was awful. I felt so terrible that from that point forward, and this was about 20 years ago, I said from this, I swore to myself, no matter when he really wants something, I'm going to stop and make sure I do it for him. If it's hemming pants, if it's taken in that suit, I actually gave that suit away immediately. <laughs> it was terrible. So somebody got a suit with a wrinkled back. <laughs> but um, so now I try to be, you know, to take the time. But you know, when you're in business and you're so overwhelmed with work, you don't, you know, for some reason that went on the back burner. So um, I've not funny. made him anything at, to that's, this point. That's, I was just curious. I mean, cause really sewing for men and I, I, I'd love to know in the chat if, if anyone here sews for um, any, any men in, in your lives. And I'm talking about a mature man, you know, little boys, that's a little bit of a different thing, but men's clothes are so, so different and men's fitting is mm -hmm. so different. So right. I don't, I don't blame you at all for taking that somewhere else and having somebody else do it, but it, you know, it's, <laughs> I felt guilty. I felt guilty after that. But you know, I do embroider our hats for fishing that say win an angel. And if he wants something embroidered on his shirts, I do that all day long now. But um uh we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> all right. I know, Joanne, you know, like if somebody says to you, um, hey, can you make pillows or can you recover my dock seat or can you do my outside port just because you sew doesn't mean that everything in the sewing field has you have an interest or even a, an expertise in so you're you're so right you're absolutely so right um oh, we have a couple okay. comments here clovis good for Wait. you clovis clovis I'm proud did. of you joanne guess what i did make win an outfit clovis you totally made me think of that when oh. we first got married uh, actually, no, we first started dating. I was just right out of college running a business, broke as a bear, if a bear could be broke. I like literally, so I went to Joanne Fabrics and got the cheapest, no, actually I went to Walmart and got the cheapest fleece I could find and made him pants, followed the pattern and they were this tall and this wide and he still has them. And I also Aww. made him a jacket. So I did make him an outfit. I think that's what made me never do it again. <laughs> A robe that's safe. Paula, Paula made her husband a robe. That's a good one. A we, got some, one. Well, we got some good um, sewers for men here, like quite a few. Glenda, uh, we, were, we saw Pete on here. Glenda and Pete, she's made her husband a couple shirts, and I saw them in California. They look fantastic. Wow. Fantastic. That is so neat. That is so neat. But you're right, you know, sewing because you can and sewing because you will and want to are sometimes, sometimes different things. Absolutely. But robes and pajama pants are pretty, pretty safe. Let's see, what did 
Michelle made a, a flannel shirt a long time ago and he wore it. So that's good. That's good. Yep. I could tell stories about someone for, for my man too, but I won't get into that tonight. I completely <laughs> forgot about the pajama pants and the fleece though. I'll have to pull that out next time. If you ever invite me back, I'll bring them because they're saved. Wynn never got rid of them. And uh, Joanne, you know, in a pattern when you don't know how to read it the right way and, and the, maybe the pattern wasn't drafted quite, quite well. I mean, the guy bought a size large pants, so I made them a size large and they were I just remember him pulling them out and I was like so excited and he just kept lifting them higher and he's standing, right? And he's like higher <laughs> and higher and out. And he's like, these are great. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Well, Sharon's done her share of sewing too. So that's all right. Oh, and we've got somebody here who hasn't made, um, made clothes yet. So that actually is the, Celine, that's the perfect, perfect segue into my, my next question. So Angela, as a sewing educator, as a pattern maker, as an expert um, teacher, if I were to come to you today and I would say, I want to make my first garment. I don't care what it is. I mean, sometimes somebody wants to make a certain thing, but I don't care what it is. I just want to learn how to sew something that I can actually wear? What would be the item that you would recommend for me? Well, there's kind of a two-way street to that. Uh, in fact, I've recently been helping some younger girls uh, in my studio. They've been coming in once a week, just four of them, and I'm teaching them how to sew. I don't usually do that, but just a, just kind of worked out in my schedule. And uh, they're a, just really great young girls from 10 years old to high school. And I was trying to think because all of them, they either wanted to do a skirt or pants or a top, but they're all different levels of sewing. They can sew, but they've never been taught as far as like w proper ways to do certain things. So I chose a skirt and, you know, you can make a skirt casual out of denim. You can make it dressy. So they're all making the Kate skirt right now. And they've all, we've fitted them for their pattern. I taught them how to do a muslin and now they'll sew the skirt, but by sewing a skirt, Number one, you learn how to put in a hidden zipper if that's what you're, that's usually an easy one to start with or, you know, a, a standard zipper. They learn how to put a waistband in, they learn how to hem, and there's not an, a lot of fitting into skirts. I mean, there's, when you get older, there's more fitting things than when they're young, um, well, depending on the body shapes and stuff, but there's not a lot of fitting issues. And usually you can get that skirt done in a day and then leave and have something to wear. Mm -hmm. So I just think that that adapts for an easy project to start with. Pajama pants are always an easy thing, but I'm thinking more garments, like as far as making something that doesn't, I saw it was a Josie that said homemade, that doesn't look homemade. I mean, we want to be homemade, but we want it to look like you, like a beautiful garment that you just purchased at a designer boutique, yeah. but it came out of your designer boutique. So a skirt's a very easy one to start with. That's, that's, that's perfect. That's a perfect suggestion. I know probably some people that learned, you know, in, in home ec or whatever, that might've been one of the, one of the first things that, that they made, but it'd be, it'd be interesting to know how many of them wore them afterwards as well. <laughs> right. Well, and actually, you know, I didn't even think about it when I told you that one of my first garments was a skirt. I actually didn't even think about that until you just said it now. And it kind of relates to these girls. And then even two of the moms are making skirts as well, because a skirt can be worn in so many different ways. If it's like a casual, it could be a long maxi skirt, any of those things, but you learn technique before you get into something that's more advanced. And knits, I love knits and knits are easy, but I don't think it's a great first project just because I think you need to get a handle on sewing with certain fabrics before you move into that. That's yeah, my opinion. That, that is perfect advice. I know, you know, you hear sometimes somebody will say, oh, like polar fleece, for example, you know, they say, oh, fleece is so, it's so easy to throw something together out of fleece. Well, I beg to differ with that, you know, right? Because you do, you know, I mean, even fabric wise, like what, what I'm curious, what fabrics are they using for the skirts that they're making? They're going to use, well, actually two of them are using cotton and one of them is going to use scuba knit because she just loves the fabric. So that is a knit, but more of a little bit thicker knit. Mm. Um, and then a cotton with spandex is the other one. So all three different, um, a cotton though is the easiest, something with a cotton, not too lightweight. So it's wrinkly, but you know, a medium weight cotton is an easy first project because you can kind of handle the fabric is easier to handle while you're learning the techniques that you need to do. And of course, they've all got you right there hands on to really 
help them. You know, you're not like, you're not like the home ec teacher that really didn't know that much about sewing, just happened to get stuck in that, in that <laughs> you know, class. You know, I, it's like a double-edged sword there too, because, you know, years ago, I had two young girls that I was mentoring in the sewing field as well. They were uh, in eighth grade, eighth grade. And they wanted to make jeans during their Christmas break. And I don't know if you've ever, if I've ever shared this with you, Joanne, but I was thinking, no way. It takes me eight hours to make a pair of jeans. And they were like, we want to put our logos on it. We So I'm like, okay, well, let's just do it and see what happens, right? So I fit them for a muslin. They worked on it. They actually made my bootcut jean pattern. We turned it into uh, one wanted bootcut, one wanted skinny leg. Do you know, in two weeks of just coming after school before Christmas break, they finished those jeans. I have a photo somewhere. They had logos on the back. They did some distressing. They wore them back to school in January. Now we're talking eighth grade. They've never sewn anything. One of the girls was pretty good. at She'd sewn other things, but they looked gorgeous. They were totally fearless. And I thought to myself, keep that in mind when you're teaching because younger, the younger age are fearless, just like I was back then. I was tracing, my sisters were tracing me like a crime scene. Nowadays, I would be embarrassed to say that, right? Well, not really. I just told you. But, <laughs> um, you know, wherever somebody's imagination is, if they have someone to mentor them and show them, I think that that's like a gift that I can give or a gift that maybe they could get from someone else or a gift they can share or you can share uh, because it's priceless. Even I, they never made jeans with me again. Now, uh, both of them are married uh, with kids. But that talent that they have, they're going to be passing on. Yeah. And I would definitely encourage anybody out there, if you have the opportunity to, you know, teach somebody even the smallest little thing, a tote bag or something like that, even if they never do another one in your sight again, you never know that spark that you may have lit that they will do again. Just like, you know, the the ladies you're talking about, who knows, maybe when, maybe there'll be like so many of our friends here, I, I bet a lot of people would say, that they sewed when their kids were younger. And mm -hmm. then they went through this whole period of life where they just had many other things to do. And then boom, they get it, you know, maybe close to retirement or they just get into a, you know, empty nest or whatever, more relaxed time of life. And they're able to now sew really um, creatively and embroider. I can't can't forget the embroidery. We don't we haven't talked that much about embroidery. I have do you remember the first thing you ever embroidered? Yes, I do. It was those jeans that <laughs> I knew nothing about embroidery. Brother asked me to do a pair of jeans for an ad for them. Actually, I don't know if that was June Mellinger on here when we saw June, but June is the one that said, hey, can you, you design jeans? So why don't you design a pair of jeans and put embroidery on the outside hoop? So I was like, awesome. So <laughs> I put all these designs going down. If you have all seen my white jeans with embroidery, I could find a photo. I'll post it uh, uh, on Facebook later this week. Three hoopings, 26 and a half hours per leg. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. On a single needle, I made it on the quattro, actually. They turned out amazing, but that was my first embroidered project ever. Wow. <laughs> Overkill. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. And many, 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 many more after that. And just as just as just as big and just as beautiful as that one. That I didn't well, know that was your first. Uh, that, that that embroidery, you know, it is so addicting. You get you get the bug of embroidery. You get the option of creating your own fabrics, which is my favorite part. It's it's like, well, look what I have here. I didn't even I didn't do this on purpose, but look what I have here, Joanne. Aww, <laughs> he sent this to me. You always send the best gifts and cards that are all like embroidered. So it's fun and it's personal, and I yeah. love this. It always sits on my table for my tea. So thanks, Joanne. Uh, you're welcome. I'm glad to see you're enjoying it. But that that I'm sure, you know, again, so many that are here tonight, you know, some some do embroidery, some haven't jumped into that into that world yet. But that is, again, the beauty of the time that we're living in sewing wise. You could pick and choose and everybody could say I sew, but it could be something completely, completely different. And I will say that and when you get that little that taste of embroidery, I know I when I was first exposed to it and people were telling me about it, I said, I don't even know what you would do with it with it, you know? And then <laughs> lo and behold, you see what happens once once you get started. Well, my mom made fun of me, not fun, but like we laugh, we talk like three times a day. So I don't mean literally making fun, but she wanted to buy an embroidery machine back in 
I want to say 2008, right before I started on It's So Easy TV. And I was like, mom, what are you going to embroider? I mean, doilies, give me a break. And I was like totally pushing her. You don't need an embroidery machine, just so. And then all of a sudden I am like, oh my gosh, I have to, I would add embroidery to the cat if the cat was still alive. I mean, like <laughs> we've even joked that I was going to embroider Wynn's boxers. At least I could add something to his garments. I would, I, if it's moving or standing still, it's going to get embroidered. And it's been like that ever since you all of a sudden get a test on it. You realize that it's not that difficult and the sky's the limit. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's just, it's, it's a whole, a whole new world of embellishment for sure. Wow. I got to bring up um, Linda's comment. Linda made her own wedding dress with 390 hours. Wow. She must have logged that with, ever, with little, little hashtags or, you know, little stick figures or whatever. Uh, oh my free God. Hand, free motion embroidered roses. That is just. That had to be beautiful. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Whew. Oh, we got some, some people really remembering some of their, some of their past sewing days here. All right. We talked about sewing. We talked about embroidery. Let's talk a little bit about fabric. What if I, again, if I put you on a desert island, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm doing that to you tonight. And I said, you can only take one kind of fabric with you. One, like one, just, just one, just name a favorite fabric. What is one, oh, what are one of your favorite fabrics on. to work That's with? That's like telling me I can only bring one book. <laughs> <laughs> No way. I have no way. Let's okay, let's let's narrow it down. How about um what are what is one of your favorite fabrics to do machine embroidery on? Mm, that could be anything. So I'll go back. I would take a rayon spandex knit all day long okay. because uh -huh, I could choice. make a dress, I could make a skirt, I could make uh this year's kind of my comfort sewing, like I say, like I made this out of a sweater knit. Um some form of a knit, but it has to have some rayon in it because if you're on a desert, it's going to be hot and it's breathable. <laughs> and you're so practical. <laughs> practical. And the other thing is, you know, um, I know a lot of the tops I show when I'm wearing online and stuff, I'm wearing a fitted ruched tee or something, but a lot of the tops I actually wear are loose fitting, maybe have a little elastic at the waist. They're comfortable, easy to clean. I can wash them easily, hang them to dry. Um, that would be my go-to now. Now, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, it would have been um, a tweed with silk lining, um, but it would be a knit and then silk would be second. Okay. That, you know, that's really interesting though, because I didn't really think about it in that way that, that my, your favorite fabric this week might not be your favorite fabric next week or next month or next year, because you are, you know, you're doing things in different and different times and, and sometimes oh, and just the zooms, I mean, the zooms, the virtual, I mean, I'm in leggings like every single day because I'll, put on a different top to go live. I've got a whole closet here in my office. I get to the office usually with wet hair. I've got a little dressing room. I get dressed, put a shirt on for the live, put my tank top back on. Now I put a part of a gym here so I can work out and then I'm working. I mean, it's it's just a different, it's what your lifestyle is. Now, yeah. back when you and I were traveling all the time, going to events, that's a whole different wardrobe. Then all of a sudden it's a little dressier. You dress up for events, maybe a lot of jackets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But right now, um, there's no need for any of that. You're, I don't. Right. Okay. Yeah. I have to ask you a question. I know I didn't warn you about this, but That's I okay. of a desert. My mom and I were just talking about getting our closets ready for spring. Right. And I never used to do that. I just would keep my handful of stuff in there because I have everything at the office. And I, I'll ask you before I answer, how many outfits out of your closet for winter did you actually take out of the closet? Ooh, that's a good one. I wore probably the same three sweaters. Mm -hmm. And the same two pairs of jeans, and that's I'm, I'm I'm being perfectly perfectly honest. That's about that's about I, it. That's about I, it. I wore in besides changing tops for the live shows. I wore the same two pairs of leggings. Well, actually, there were four pairs because then I'd wash them at the end of each week, and two pairs of jeans, all that are folded, so don't, those don't even come out of the closet. And I would wear like the same couple tank tops with a like a hoodie jacket. The whole winter, I had them like two different colors and I would just wash them every Friday and then have the new, I mean, I never wore any, not even my nice sweaters. So I'm thinking, why do I have all these clothes now? But you know, life might change again, but seriously, yeah, I don't even need all that stuff now. It, and we do change our tops a little more often now that we're, when we're doing live shows, but that's, <laughs> we won't, we won't, we won't admit if we've had 
pajama pants on or any or shorts <laughs> on when we look dressed up from the waist. From the waist I'm on. all about pajama pants. <laughs> uh, we, we've got a few more friends even joining us here tonight. We've got um, Ashley's here. Hi, Ashley. So good to have you here. Oh, my. Well, we can't talk about fabric without talking about denim because I don't know about you. <laughs> I do know about you. I know how much you love making jeans and not only making them yourself, but helping others make jeans. So I'd love to, you know, get some of your, some of your thoughts and some of your tips on, on, on denim. But before I do that, I'm just going to bring up a, a picture so that I can show everybody. Uh, you have just introduced a brand new online class. Yes. A yes. virtual class on how to sew your own designer stretch jeans. Oh, that's just, I know you've done that before, but this is a whole new pattern. Yes. Yes. It, and the patterns included in the class. I, you know, I love directions, but I love learning by video and interaction. So if you have questions and stuff, how, you know, you, you're trying to think to yourself, how am I going to um, do that? And, you know, great illustrations are great, but for me, I'm a visual learner. So I thought I'm going to do this class. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I Angela. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I hit the wrong button here. Let me get you back up. I wanted to get you on here with a picture of your jeans. <laughs> you know, um, now when I say stretch jeans, that does not mean skin tight, itsy bitsy jeans. I'm just talking about stretch denim that's comfortable. Is it a rayon? Is it a cotton? So in this class, you learn about different fabrics. You also how to fit a pattern. Uh, that has stretch fabric. It doesn't have to be skin tight. My stretch jeans, I like to have loose in the calves and my ankles and my knees. I can't stand to have tight. I mean, leggings fine, but not jeans. So if it's something that you wear all the time and you have a pattern that you can adapt to your own body to fit, then you can make jeans. It takes me typically seven hours to make a pair of jeans, but I'm also embroidering the buttonholes and the pockets and things like that. And once you got it down pat, uh, you never... Like I say, you never go back. You never want to buy one because if you find good fabric and you find a good fitting pattern, you're golden. You can make jeans any way you want. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bring up the, the picture um, full screen again, just so that everybody can, can see that as large as, as possible. But I love the lines that you have on, on those, you know, on those jeans. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what makes that style in particular so, so flattering. I see you have an in all sizes. You can talk about that a little bit too, but um, you know, what makes that so flattering? Well, you know, I've, I hate to, I'm embarrassed to say though, I've been working on this pattern for two years, but it's true. And the reason is because I wanted to have the plus sizing. I call it misses and women. So misses from zero to 18 and then women's from 16 W to 36 W totally different body shapes, a totally different sloper to start with. And this jean's different than my boot cut because it's more of a, it's not high rise where it's an uncomfortable high rise, It's but it's higher. So it's higher in the back, lower in the front, but it's still the high rise that's kind of flattering right now. So it's not like, <laughs> I don't know. There's like a mid rise that that's very comfortable, but this is higher than that. So it should, and you can adapt that to any, you know, you can make it taller or shorter, but also uh, the legs are a slender leg then which you could change to other things, but it's kind of a stylish look to wear with longer tops, longer sweaters. Um, it's going to be great for summer. And as you can see, I love doing some fun stuff on the pockets. <laughs> and that's just decorative stitching. That one wasn't embroidered. It was decorative stitching from the brother machine. That is really, that is really fun. Definitely, definitely fun to do, um, do whatever you do, and do whatever you can on those pockets. Yeah, and the wrinkles that you see on the back yoke, it, I put those on my dress form, and the dress form is one size smaller than I am. So if you see wrinkles, it's just because the dress form isn't as full as I am. So <laughs> that's why. Wow, that that's I'm gonna um, find the the link so that I can show everybody how they can actually um, sign up for those classes. So tell us a little bit more how how the classes work and how 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 are you able to do that online with, with someone that's um, getting your pattern and, you know, and actually sewing, sewing along with you. Tell, tell us kind of the process. So uh, for this particular class, now I have different classes on Angel Wolf Academy, but this one right now, the classroom is open. It opened on Friday 
And you you can sign up at any time. But if you want to join live, I these are actually going to be live sessions. And then you can watch the replay, I say forever, but <laughs> however long the Angie Wolf Academy is open. So hopefully forever, a long time. But when you, when you go into the classroom right now, you can download the pattern. It's in PDF form in both sizes. I also have a lot, quite a few women that have asked me to, I print the patterns here, put them in a tube and ship them out. That's kind of a fun way to do it. There's a minimal extra charge for that, but it's just basically shipping in a tube. So you have a couple of weeks to get your items together, your supplies together. And then there's a full schedule on that page right now that you can see when the live sessions are going to be. It's basically every single day for the whole week before, I think it's the week before Holy Week, for those of you that follow that. And then the last lesson will be on Monday before Easter. And then there'll be one more session after that. So these lessons are on two different platforms. So the first platform, I don't see you. You only see me, but you can ask questions. Um, it's the same thing we use for Fashion Sewing Club. And then the last two, I think there's a total of nine hours of lessons. The last two lessons are on Zoom. That way, if you have a question, I can actually help you um, if it's if you're trying to get the fit tweaked or whatever. So uh, you're literally going to sew from beginning to end following along. If you're busy, you're on spring break, you can still sign up for the class and watch the replay. And I'm always answering questions. So join, you know, it's kind of like Craftsy when I taught for Craftsy. I still have many classes on there, but this is my own platform and I have a little more control over what's happening there. So, and it's not the same jeans class that's on Craftsy. That was my first one from, gosh, over 10 years ago. This is really specific to stretch denim, which, you know, there's a lot of technique, as you know, Joanne, to, to top stitching on stretch denim. And you want to know why? Because if you don't use a certain stitch and things like that, and you put those jeans on and stretch them out and then take them off, all your stitches pop <laughs> out of the bobbin. It doesn't look good. And I saw Kelly asking, did you alter the pattern everywhere? Yes. So every pattern is altered in the legs. In I mean, from size to size, I don't just take one and you can't just take one pattern and make it bigger and smaller. There's different changes on there to make. So, um, well, but that was my challenge, my sloper for the plus sizing, because I really didn't want to have a pattern that was only limited to the misses because I just, for me, I think that's very important. Uh, I that's I think that's one of the things that's so amazing about your whole pattern collection, though, is that you've you've been able to gear it for so many different sizes. I know I just got a pattern from you recently for a friend who is very, very, very small, and I can't find anything in commercial patterns that's even remotely close to her measurements. So we're going to be making something from one of your patterns, and I know it's going to work out really, really great. We got a lot of people excited about this class, definitely. I see a lot of people in here that have already signed up. In fact, when some people are saying, oh my gosh, the class is open, but I wanted to leave once the class is open to give you time to get your supplies. I actually just ordered some more denim. Um, so I try to help in all the aspects for those that need it. Some people don't. Some people have already bought denim two years ago when I started this class, <laughs> when, I, when I said, I'm going to make another pair of jeans. But you know, um, when you're sewing along, I think when you have a community to sew along with. I just think there's something about that. And if you can ask questions, I mean, I'm just thinking about old patterns. I, if I could have asked the instructor right there, hey, by the way, why is this interfacing going this way? Because wouldn't it be better? You know, that would have been a, a life uh, changing event. So I hope to do the same and take the fear out of sewing jeans for many people. Of any and everybody, everybody in the in the class becomes your 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 cheerleader. So we do have a, a couple questions on that. So while we're talking about it, let's go ahead and squeeze these in. How do you sign up for the virtual gene class, and how do you get the pattern? So hi Sharon, I think so that that link that she put there, um, academy.angelawolf.com. It's actually the first lesson shown there. There's quite a few lessons, but it's right at the top, and it has a picture like what Joanne had shown there uh, with the jeans. And you just click on it and sign up. And right away, lesson one is open for you. And that has a list of supplies and links for all the PDF patterns for you to download. And then there's also a section if you want me to print it for you, uh, there, where you email me. And that gives me a little bit of time to get that pattern to you before we start. And then the other lessons start opening up as the schedule um, mentions on there. So each lesson will be live on the dates and times shown. And then immediately after it will be available for, to watch the replay on there in the class. It just, it sounds like a ton of fun. <laughs> it sounds like so much fun. fun. And, you know, even like distressing, I, I, we just went by this window when, when and I went to dinner tonight, Joanne, <laughs> and 
I looked at when I looked at the window and I said, oh my gosh, I have those shorts. Now, by the way, they were shorts that I had since high school. So I'm not sure if they still fit, but they might. <laughs> and they, I would cut them off and they just kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And they're all like distressed and cut off and, and they're selling them for a hundred dollars. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. I and know. I'm buying jeans that are distressed. Uh, well, I'll teach you how to do that as well. Not everybody wants that look, but you'll learn how to do that if that's the look you're going for. And then Kelly's asking, are the legs slim for the plus sizes too? So tell us a little bit about how that graduates for different sizes. So yeah, Kelly, what, um, so for the plus sizes, as things change, so I made a larger um, hip and stomach area on the pattern for the women's sizes. Now, there might still need to be some changes for different body shapes. Like I have to change a couple things even for my own body shape, but the legs are slim. They're not like just a straight leg because a lot of the patterns and even styles, what I did is I went to Nordstrom's and measured a lot of the jeans in the plus sizes of what I thought looked good. And that's how I came up with a lot of these measurements and then adapted, tested them a little bit, a lot of it, I should say. So they're still a slim leg for the plus size as well. But in the class, in the first lesson, I'm going to show everyone how to measure their thigh, their knee, their calf, and their ankle. Those are the main measurements. Now, we didn't do that in the pants sloper class because this is different for the skinny jeans. And take your measurement, put it onto the leg, and know where to add or move that leg around. Because I know a lot of women who work out or who are runners or uh, for any reason have larger calves. And so if you're doing a skinny jean, and then it's super tight on your calf. It's so uncomfortable and it's not healthy to wear anyways. Um, for example, when I used to fly all the time, I didn't want something too tight in my knee area because it would make my legs swell and it's not good for blood clots. So everybody has a different body shape for legs. So this is a skinny leg, but you can adapt it to where you need to. So, and I'm gonna walk you through that in class too. So yes, and yes. <laughs> okay, another, another really good question. Would this class be okay? for beginners. So beginners is kind of a relative term, I would say a little bit. If you've sewn garments before of any type, I wouldn't consider you a bit a beginner. Would you agree, Angela? I agree. And you know, start, nice to see you, by the way. Um, and by the way, nice to see you, Kelly. She's been working a ton. <laughs> um, for a beginner, it is kind of like, uh, I, I'd have to say yes. And you, you know why? Because if you were here earlier, when I was talking about the two eighth grade girls that actually made jeans and were fearless. I just walk them through step by step. Now you need to know how to sew. I don't go through like how to wind a bobbin and beginner stuff like that. You need to know how to sew. But from that point, you're going to follow. And, and the visual of watching how to do the fly, watching how to do the pockets, everything's broken up into steps. So you can just follow along. And even if you watch the live, when you go back to watch the replay, you can hit stop, stop, Stop. That's my favorite thing. Rewind. Yep. Stop. Stop. Yep. Rewind. Pause. <laughs> yeah. What did she just do? <laughs> so thanks for asking that, Star. Definitely. Janice, you should sign up. You if you if you have trouble, trouble finding jeans, um, you gotta you gotta gotta get those custom made ones. You'll never you'll never go back. <laughs> never def, never never go back. Well, you know, Janice, you say yours are too short in the waist. Mine are too long in the waist. So uh, it's a very easy pattern alteration. Which in lesson one for in depth fitting that will not be covered. And I've mentioned that before. I have a pants sloper fitting. If you have like if you're like nothing fits and I've got major different issues, that's different. But for fitting issues as far as raising and lowering the waist to go on your waist changing the hips, changing the width of the legs, and changing the rise. All of that is covered in the class. And it's easy to follow, too. Yep. And she says she needs new need, needs new jeans that fit. I, You know, I remember sewing jeans back from my fashion school days. We had to design our own. And I can remember making a fun fun pattern for the pocket. But I, I just, you know, jeans are just, they're a lot of fun to make because they're just, again, there's something that that's that's so... We, we, you know, so many of us love to wear. I mean, they're just a great wardrobe basic and to be able to, to custom fit it to your, your needs and what you like, you know, I mean, different widths of legs and all that type of thing. And then to be able to put them on and wear them somewhere is just such a great, well, great thing. Jen, I don't know if you've had this. And, oh, thanks, Jan. Um, if you've had this issue, when I 
first started looking for skinny jeans a couple of years ago, just to wear with longer sweaters. I always swore my whole life I'd never wear a pair of skinny jeans. I hated the look on me. I don't have hips, so it just made me look as flat and round as um, uh, just I hated it. <laughs> but then I was like, wait, these are so comfortable and they're kind of like leggings. But if I wear a longer sweater, then you can't see that other part that I didn't like. So through time, as denim became a little bit more accessible, better denims with good stretch, those all, it, the fabric can make or break. But when I was trying to buy pairs in the stores, they, I could not figure out who they made. I don't have any hips and a tush, <laughs> hardly. And I could barely squeeze into those pants. And the, the stomach area was huge. And I mean, they were so ill-fitting. I thought, what are they using as a sloper for their patterns? And there's a few designers, which I won't mention, that I don't know who they make their clothes for because I couldn't fit in them. My sister, who has a different body shape, she couldn't. Uh, so, you know, once you have a pattern of your own, what we call a sloper, you, even if you gain weight or lose weight through time, it's easy to adjust for you. And you don't have that misery of bringing 20 pairs of jeans into the dressing room yeah, yeah, and yeah. wanting to cry on your way out. <laughs> I, 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 we, that's probably the most common experience for, for, for women anyway with jeans and bathing suits where oh. you go into that dressing room with a stack of, I mean, you, you got to be careful because sometimes they have limits on how many things you can bring in the dressing room. It was, like, okay, can we just put things here? For I'm going to change my lighting. It looks like it got dark outside. Sorry about that. But yeah. Um, and then, and then, you know, if you're fortunate, you find something, but so many times you go home disappointed and, and here's the crazy thing. I'm sure you've thought this way. I'd love to hear if you've thought this way or anybody else here has, but you spend that time shopping, you come home empty handed and you, you come into your sewing space and you say, if, if only I would have st stayed here and mm -hmm. started sewing on something, you're, mentally you'd be way better off, but you'd have something <laughs> to do for it. I absolutely a hundred percent agree. In yeah. fact, when I, uh, when I first started learning how to sew jeans many years ago, I went to a higher end store. It might've been Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom. I don't know, but both, I loved both stores. And I went in and, and any pair of jeans that I thought was cute, I brought into the dressing room. And I analyzed how the pockets were. Did they use flat felled seams? Did they, most of them didn't have any flat felled seams, which I was like, yay, because I hated doing that on thick denim. So uh, some of them had beautiful pockets. Some had a whole different way of how they put it together. Some I purchased, they didn't have any interfacing in them, which is totally different than what a lot of the other patterns might tell you to do. So by doing all of that, that's how I learned how to make jeans. And then it came to the fit. And so you're getting all of that in the class, but it's years of practicing and learning and how to distress. And I don't know, Joanne, if I had shared this with you one time when we were talking about jeans, but did I ever share the story about the, my first distressed pair of jeans that I did? No, I'd, I'd love to hear it. It's very frightening, but. <laughs> all right. I'm going to bring you up full screen to tell this story. Here we go. <laughs> Lynn is like the best supporter ever. And I had a huge fashion show. I think 350 people. It was sold out immediately. So I'm prepping, getting, I had 60 garments for this fashion show and I wanted these jeans. So I made the jeans beginning to end. They were gorgeous, beautiful top stitching. So when I went into the garage and took one of his drills and then I went to Ace Hardware and found like the circle sandpaper thing that you, you know, can just do some distressing. And I said, Hey, when I need some help, I brought him in the kitchen. I laid him on the floor. I said, you get at that end and I'll get at this end. This is back when my cat was alive. So the cat like kind of stood in the middle, like yours does just like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> and I started the drill, not realizing that it has different powers and speeds and just started like running this circular thing down the legs. Well, in the meantime, blue denim's going everywhere, top stitching's being ripped out, holes in places I didn't want holes. And I now I'd spent 10 hours making these jeans. So I finished and Wynn looked at me and as serious, he says, is that the look you were going for? And I was like, yeah, no, it was not, but we're done. So flip them over let's do the other side. So we did the other side. <laughs> And oh. those jeans were the most popular jeans ever. So I've come, I've progressed since then. That's not how I'm going to teach you how to do distressing, but that was my first distress pair, Joanne. It was a hot mess, but they oh were some jeans. <laughs> well, 
that it it takes it it takes real art really and truly to do the the distressing so <laughs> that's you know that's another whole whole topic Oh, Josie says she's always had a hard time finding clothes that, that fit. That's why she hates clothes shopping. Yeah, I can, I can relate to that. Absolutely. We had a few more comments on, on, um, you know, shopping and trying on clothes. So Ashley, yep. Time spent <laughs> shopping could have been sewing. That would be a good motto to hang over, hang on our, on our wall. Yeah. We got to come up with a, a clever, clever way to say that. <laughs> Cindy said, Jerry says, no crying in the sewing room. And Kelly says, Jerry's wrong. Oh, my. Well, oh, you know, we've talked, we've talked a lot about uh, your jeans pattern, but my, you've got a whole lineup of a lot of terrific patterns. I had this up up here before. I'm going to bring it, bring it back. So, again, we don't, you know, we don't, we've only got about an hour tonight, so we can't talk about, about everything and all of them. But I'm I'm really curious to know what makes your patterns different from what we would call, you know, the big three or the standard kind of commercial patterns. I know some of our some of your friends in here that have already sewn a lot with them. And I would I would have my own opinions on that too. There's a lot of reasons, but I'd like to hear from you, like in your mindset when you were creating them and you started pattern making, you know, what did you say? Here's how I'm gonna make this different and better. You know, that's a great question. And I didn't intend on being a pattern designer. I was a fashion designer. But then when I started on It's So Easy, I'm getting emails of people saying, what pattern is that? What pattern is that? I'm like, who cares? I just showed you how to design it yourself. <laughs> but I didn't realize that, you know, that's not how this is going to work. So I, I made the investment for software. And knowing that I love engineering, the software's worked out fine. Um, I wanted to make patterns. And ironically, I looked at some of my old notes that I didn't follow right away. And I'm doing it now with the virtual classes. Originally, I wanted a pattern with a beautiful booklet, which is what I offer. I wanted paper pattern because my cat eats through tissue. Now, the cat's dead, but <laughs> when I get another cat, he's probably going to eat through tissue too. So I wanted quality paper. I wanted a good booklet with really good instructions, not a bunch of words that I've never heard of or somebody else hasn't heard of. I want it to be as simple to follow as possible. And originally, I wanted to have a CD, a DVD in each pattern giving you a video of how to sew. I am a total visual learner. And I just, if I could just watch somebody do this, even if I didn't want to do it exactly the same way, I can at least see what they're doing and then go, okay, I like that, but I might change that a little bit. And I, that's what I want it to be for everyone that sews. Now, ironically, I didn't do the DVD part because it was going to be pretty expensive. And I mean, I did a lot of filming and editing myself, but I just didn't have time with everything. Now, when I purchased this building about three years ago, I intending to do virtual classes. That was before COVID hit. Then COVID hit and everyone knows what a virtual class is. So now the patterns are going to be a pattern. Like this one will be my first pattern with a video. I did that for basic leggings too, a pattern with a video. Uh, through time, I probably will have a pattern with the video optional. Uh, but this way, it just for me, I just can teach you better and find out if there's any issues that you know people are having when they're sewing, especially with jeans. So I want it to be quality fit, fitting closer to a ready to wear, not like um, my first pair of pants that I made that I cut out the size that was supposed to be for me. And the crotch was this too low and they were too big. I And to offer the support with the pattern to help it fit you. So that's what I want it to be different. And I don't know, I'll ask people in here um, what you think, but I, I love the booklets. That's yeah. my favorite. And, yep. you know, with COVID, the printing got to be a little issue. So we're into video now. And they're spiral bound. <laughs> so you can really use them, lay them flat at your machine while you're actually creating it. I, you know, I'm going to just share a little bit of my favorite thing about your patterns is, um, first of all, I love, I love that you've narrowed it down to something that just about everybody would really wear. I, I don't know if anybody else here gets stars in their eyes when they look at patterns, but you know, when you go and you look at the big pattern book, you go, Oh, this would be fun. And this would be fun. And this would be fun. And this is pretty. And that, and then you, 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 you know, you maybe come home with a stack of them and you go like, yeah, but where am I going to wear this to, you know? <laughs> so just like you were talking about, you know, the leggings, the knit tops, the, the jeans, even your dresses, you know, they're, they're something you could wear just about everywhere, all of those patterns. So your pattern line to me, just, it makes perfect sense. It's sensible sewing, but it's stylish sewing at, at the same time. So that would be that was would be some of my my favorite things about it. 
Oh, thanks, Joanne. Definitely. Thank you. Definitely. And then, of course, uh, we've had a few um, comments. Let's see if I can grab a couple here about your um, sewing fashion club. So what, while I find them, why don't you just tell everybody what that is? Because that ties right into your patterns, too, because they're buying a pattern and then they're learning how to use it in an, a, a whole bunch of different ways. Right. And the fashion sewing club was something that actually took me about three to four years to even develop. And finally, my husband said to either do it or don't do it <laughs> because I was just trying to perfect what website to use. It's a club, a monthly, whether you pay a monthly fee or annual. Uh, it's a club of people who love fashion sewing. Some people in there never sew. They just love to learn. And it involves three virtual events each month. Uh, some sew and tell where you're showing off what you made. I teach you how to take a pattern and design other um, outfits. So for example, that top behind me, we started with the ruche tee and we turned it into a boat neck. We did a few with boat necks. You can go back and watch hundreds of replays in there. Um, it's a great community, a community that's different than just being on social media. We're able to get together. Um, we've now added Zoom for once a month so we can see each other. The other lessons are actual lessons. You can always ask questions in advance and just a club to learn how to fashion sew. And that's literally what it is. S sewing for beginners, sewing for advanced. We learn about fabrics. We learn about all the things. And if you're stuck on a project, you get an opportunity to ask as well. So it was a dream that I wanted to do this. And it finally came to fruition. We had our three-year anniversary, Joanne. I couldn't believe it. Uh, that was in February. And I was so grateful. And you know, from the beginning, oh my gosh, I made so many mistakes. And I, I was like, I wish I could go back to like a few people that were in there the first month and say, ah, uh, this changed. But you know, the ones that stuck in there with me, they've been great supporters. And it's a great uh, camaraderie of friends as well. Definitely. Definitely. And, and you know, we all learned something new by doing anyway. So, <laughs> and the, the other thing is, you know, the sewing community is a very friendly community as well. So that always makes it, that always makes it fun. Well, it really I know we don't have a whole lot more time left, but I, I, we can't talk about sewing without talking about sewing tools. So I, again, again, I've got another one of my favorites oh. here. <laughs> I happen to have an autographed version here. <laughs> but really, a really big autograph. <laughs> The clapper, as it's known, is not only good for making jeans, it's good for anything and everything you ever sew a seam in, no matter what it is. And I know you get a lot of questions, and I'm sure probably already we've got some people that certainly know what this is, but others that are going, what in the world does she have in your hand? So give us just a little bit of a brief, um, you know, Tell us a little bit about how these are made and, and why they're so great. So the Taylor's Clapper is an, a tailoring tool that was uh, like a million years old. <laughs> Maybe not that old, but pretty old. And when I was sewing, I found one uh, that back then June Taylor was making them. And I had it and I used it. Every, I mean, you press a seam it will and with a little steam. <laughs> that sounds like it's rhyming. Press a seam with some steam and hold the clapper on. It will hold your seams open or to one side for hemming. You know that beautiful crease you get from dry clean pants? It does that. Um, it's like the best pressing tool to make your garments or any sewing look professional. And Joanne, when I started out, it's so easy. I remember Kathy was like, where did you, that thing is gross. <laughs> and it really wasn't gross. It was discolored from all like yeah. 30 years of use. So they weren't making them anymore and their patent had run out. So I came locally uh, in Michigan here. And I went to uh, the first builder and he I said, can I need help making a clapper? He's like, I don't do lights. And I'm like, no, 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 this is for pressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause there was that light where you clapped and it turned on. And off. Exactly. So he, he started making them and then he couldn't keep up um, because he did custom houses and like, this was way like below his pay grade. <laughs> then I found another company here locally and they do mass produce. So they mass produce these here. And then I have them here. We put stickers on them. I sign them for people who want them autographed and we ship them out and they're making everybody sewing so much more fabulous. But if you get it autographed and you have a sticker, don't use that side on the fabric. <laughs> you are, yeah, that, that is, yeah, that's always my, my side that my hand, hand goes on. But you know how nice to have something that's made in America too. So you know, custom, custom like that. But yeah, once you start pressing with a clapper, 
you'll, you'll like you, it'll be like your scissors that you hide somewhere so that nobody else touches it to use it for, for anything else. Absolutely. Exactly. Gotta have it. Exactly. So thinking of, of tools like that, I mean, that's definitely a must have, but see, tell me if you can pull another one out of your mind, that would be just something like a, if I said, you know, what are some of your must have tools in your sewing space? What are the kind of things you reach for? On the, the desert time? island? <laughs> Uh, okay, so a seam ripper, a good seam ripper. I can't tell you how many people I've sewed with or taught or uh, gone into their sewing room or whatever, and they have a seam ripper that came with their machine from 20 years ago. It's dull. It's gonna, you're gonna hurt yourself. So I have new seam rippers. They're not that expensive. At least once a week, I grab a new one. Um, and not that you don't need seam rippers, but I need a seam ripper. So I, you might be a great sewer, but. I'm not. You rip what you <laughs> sew. We, we all rip what we sew. <laughs> yes. uh, seam ripper, silk pins are definitely one, um, and really good sharp scissors. So I have now um, Kai scissors, a, a few of those that I have the Angela Flow go on now. I, I just because it, I just he offered to do it, and I think it's awesome. And they're my favorite scissors ever. Sharp, good quality scissors. Um, the list could go on. I mean, like. Um, good cutting mat. Um, I love the Martelli mats. I mean, things like that, a good iron. So I, I know, was I supposed to stop there, but these are like, <laughs> okay. Well, it's the thing. It, like I said, we, you know, with all this talking, whenever we say talk, let's talk sewing, we could, it, it could be endless, but you know, yeah. some of those things just, um, maybe we take for granted, but then, you know, it, it kind of helps to hear it from you because then everybody else is saying, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> gotta have that. Gotta have that. Well, and you know, Joanne, I'm just thinking back when I first started, and even when I first started my business, I didn't have very much money to do this with. And I had a sewing machine, a very simple sewing machine, a very basic serger, about as basic as they got, but that was a gift from my family when I graduated. And I know I've helped a lot of people start alteration business and things. And I know that you and I, as brother brand ambassadors, we're using the Luminaire, the best of the best, the highest end. And I'd never want people to think that to start sewing, you have to have that. I could have oh, never yeah. afforded that. That is I mean, such nowadays, a good point. That is yeah. such a good point. And so I had the most basic sewing machine for the first 15 years of my business. I did not have a commercial machine. I didn't have anything fancy. It just sewed. And I really wish I would have had like a PQ 1500 or something like that because it was fast and I just needed to sew straight stitches. But you don't need something that... I mean, do something within your budget and you just need it to sew. <laughs> yeah. and That's it. That, that is, that is so helpful because we all started somewhere and, and, you know, you and I, again, we, you know, you're right. You, we were brother ambassadors. We get to use a lot of the better products that are out there. So that's what we're using and that's what we're showing, but really and truly you can do so much with so little. So don't ever let that stop you. I know that would be your that would be your 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 cheer for everybody out there. That it really would. Even when I was, you know, you have to have a good steam iron that doesn't drip. I used Rowenta for years, but then I ended up having to buy one every year because I used it so much. I ended up investing in another iron that was maybe a hundred bucks. But you know, you slowly add, get the mandatory things that you need within a budget. And you know, back then they also didn't have where you could spend 150 bucks a month for a nicer machine. You had you bought it right then. <laughs> that was it. So a lot of things like that, and just make a little wish list, and then through time. Um, add things to your room. So don't get overwhelmed. I know a lot of people are like, I can't start sewing because I'm going to want everything. And that's not true. No, you really, the, the bare basics will get you, get absolutely get you started. Uh, Lisa has a good question. How do you keep your scissors sharp? You know, <laughs> I have only had one pair of Kai scissors that I had to send back and he sharpened them and he would do that for you too. Jeff is a great guy and shipped them back. I've never had to sharpen any of those scissors. And I hate to say it, my first pair of Kai scissors, I won in a fashion design contest at the sewing expo. I did not know how expensive they were. And I used them for wrapping paper for the whole year. Then the next year, when I went to the show, I saw Kai scissors and I was like, oh, thanks for your scissors for winning last year. And I looked at the price and I was like, oh, I'm using those for what? And you know, even after using them on paper, they worked fine. So I've had one pair that I've had to sharpen. I sent them back there and they shipped them back. Yeah, it it I think the better the quality they are, the 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 longer they stay sharp for sure. Yeah. yeah. I do want to take just a second to um thank everyone not only for watching the live, but if you're popping in here and you're watching this on a replay, we're um happy to have you here too. This is 
Um, you can certainly watch this again and uh, find all the information by scrolling through and, and clicking on the links and, and different things. Um, Angela, I can't I can't talk to you without asking you a little bit about your uh, one of your favorite hobbies, which is fishing. <laughs> and that everybody again that knows you knows this already. But for those that don't, when, you know, tell us what what you do tournament fishing, right? Is that what it's called? Tournament fishing? What did we do? What? What does that mean? <laughs> what is that like for, for a stitcher to go out and do tournament fishing? <laughs> it's, it's just like gambling on the water, I guess is what you'd call it. <laughs> it's, so we, um, for many years, Wynn would carry my books to the boat, he'd fish, and I would read. And that was for many, many years. Then through time, he always fished tournaments. He was a charter captain before I met him. Then he got into commercial real estate. And then now um, fishes tournaments. He's back into chartering because he just has the extra time and he loves it. I mean, he loves fishing as much as you and I love sewing. But through time, I love being on the boat and I love being on the water. Through time, though, I wanted to learn how to do fishing. So the way he was doing it, I wanted to set the lines. I wanted to catch the fish. So in the summer, we fish salmon tournaments on Lake Michigan. We go from St. Joe all the way up to Frankfurt, back down. For those of you that don't know, that's quite a ways up the coast. And then in the winter, uh, when the opportunity arises, not through COVID, but uh, the sailfish tournaments in the Keys. And so it's fishing for money, basically, but it's just being on the water and having a great time. We have a team here that we fish with. And in, for sailfish, it's usually just Wynn and I that fish. Uh, but we just love it. It's just the challenge of catching something fabulous to eat, too. Not sailfish, but <laughs> salmon is great to eat. Yeah. Do you bait do you bait your own hook? You gotta tell me if you do or not. <laughs> well, it's not like it's not baiting. Yes, I do. Okay. So two things. One, if you're salmon fishing, you're using lures. So you just put the lures in the water and you're trolling. For sailfish fishing, we fish with kites. And ironically, my sewing talent comes in handy because you have, not to gross anybody out that doesn't want to hear this, but you have little baits that are alive <laughs> that you catch. And then you hang them from a line that's through a kite. It's a long story. But to make a long story short, you have a little rubber band with the needle that you thread through the nose of the fish and throw them out. So I'm like, I cannot believe I'm using a sewing needle for this. <laughs> but it works. And then you catch fish. It is fun too to have a hobby that that takes you totally away from something. I bet you've got I bet you've been inspired by certain colors on fish and, and the waves and the sky and all, all that you see when you're, when you're out boating, I'm sure. Right. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, ironically, Joanne, I was just talking to a company today because you we were talking about fabrics, how much they've changed. Well, there's all these knits now that have, um, not SPF, but basically protect you from UV rays. And I yeah. just sourced a whole, new batch of fabrics will be coming with my new patterns this summer um, that will offer that because, you know, we never had that before. I mean, yeah. and I remember when they first came out with that, there was like two fabrics and they were, I wouldn't wear them anywhere. So now those have even changed to be able to protect us from the sun. So sewing, fishing, it all goes in hand in hand somehow. Oh, that, that, that'll be exciting to see the new, new fabric. That'll be really. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to have to wrap up here pretty soon. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and go into some of the questions that that we um, missed, and hopefully we can do like a real rapid fire kind of um, kind of answering these. So let's see. Oh, let's see. Um, we did have a question about your courses. Um, I don't think she means slipper. So Linda, <laughs> so Linda, there's, two, there's quite a few different courses. The sloper is if you want to have the perfect fitting pant. I think from that sloper. You can I think change. that was an updated question there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, and the 2.0 is just for jeans. So the slopers where you have a fitted pair of pant, uh, a pant, and then you can design other pants from that. So if you need a lot of fitting help, a lot of people take that first. And then, well, you can take it with the jeans class. It doesn't matter uh, because then you'll learn how to adapt that sloper into a jeans pattern. So that's kind of a little bit more advanced for fitting. Um, and then the jeans is just jeans. Those are the difference. Perfect. And Perfect. you can always email me too. And then Cindy wants to know, will you have a booklet to go with the new jeans pattern? Not right now. Okay. Because you got the live class, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that that might not come along again. So, but at this point, no. Okay. And then Connie wants to know um, directions to raise the waist. I'm sure that would probably come in your fitting yes. 
class. That will be in the fitting area of the slow. That's actually in the jeans class because that's a base. Anything basic for altering your jeans pattern to fit better, that's included in the class. It's just the really technical. If you need a lot of fitting issues, that's in the sloper class. And you can email me about that too. I don't like hip huggers. <laughs> Oh, I get it. So, and I show you how to measure to know where the waist, everybody has like, I'm so short waisted. And for example, my sister, when we stand next to each other, her belly buttons here and mine's way down or vice versa, <laughs> you know, <laughs> different. And then back to um, notions and such, Jane wants to know about the chalk that you, that is a, that's a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous question, Jane, because if you go shopping for chalk, you're going to find so many different kinds and they all work differently. Don't they, Angela? Yes. And you know, I use uh, clay chalk most of the time because you can just brush it off. Uh, I like wax chalk on some things because you can press it off, but it's just so dangerous. If you use a fabric that has any itsy bitsy bit of a polyester, it doesn't come off. So I like um, clay chalk. And I'm, I'm sure you, um, I know I've bar I borrowed it from you a few times when I saw you, you were using it in the studio. I was like, yeah, can I have a piece of that? Just a little slip. I know, I buy huge boxes because I just go through. I mean, you could use it in there. If the kids come over, let them go use it in the parking lot. <laughs> it, it, it works. It really works. The plain old ordinary, ordinary chalk. So um, sure. How do you get in the sewing club? You might have answered that actually in the past, but let's go over that again. Just go to AngelaWolf.com. Angela Wolf, only one F. And as you scroll down right there, it says Fashion Sewing Club. Click on that and it will take you for information and how to sign up. There's also a place you can email me on there. And there you go. There's your main, um, there's Angela's main contact right there, AngelaWolf.com. That'll take you to the place you need to go to get to everywhere else you want to be, right? <laughs> and if you're going to join the Fashion Sewing Club, do it tonight because tomorrow we have a lesson at noon. And um, we also are, uh, Karina, who is still awake, she's going to be awake tomorrow at noon too. And we're adding a few bag making tips in there too. So you might like to join that. That That's wonderful. Well, I think we got everything pretty much in here that we really, um, really needed uh, to get in. So again, I just want to thank everybody for, for being here, for watching. Angela, I can't thank you enough for um, spending the time here with me. I really enjoy doing these these shows, um, they come around, uh, the interview shows that I call So Tell Me come around once a month. And I always bring somebody here that will um, inspire everybody that's watching and so that we can all all learn together. But um, Angela, you and I just, we always have a great time talking sewing together and to be able to do it with a big group of, of um, friends here just makes it even more special. So so nice. Joanne, thank you for having me. And by the way, I want to congratulate you on your YouTube show because I know that was uh, something that you'd been working on for a long time. So congrats. It's awesome. And well, you're going you. to be on, gonna be on the show next week or is it the week after on the brother show? Uh, I think I'll be. Uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. <laughs> I'll see you next week. You're on my calendar. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even talk about that, but um, just real, real quick before we say goodbye, why don't you go ahead and tell a little bit about the broadcast uh, that you're doing on behalf of Brother that we well, take part in together at times. Yeah, well, it's really fun when you're on there. So she, you'll be there next Tuesday. So we do live shows for Brother every Tuesday and Thursday. It'll be changing a little bit, maybe, you know, different times and stuff. It depends on everyone's schedule and all the people are, you know, traveling again. But Joanne, you're going to be on there with the free design of the month, I believe. That is correct. Yeah. And for those of you that do have Brother Machines, it's a great place to ask questions. And then... Uh, and then I have a show on Wednesdays at 1.30 that's free on YouTube or Facebook um, where we're making that skirt still, the quilted skirt. Oh, that's a fun one. And, you know, I, I, I want to encourage everybody, too, if you don't have a brother machine, if you don't have anything like a brother machine, we are brother ambassadors. And, and that means that those are the products that we work with. Those are the products that we know. But we also know that there's a lot of other people out there who have a lot of other things and we welcome everybody to come because when it comes to a lot of things, they overlap and they intertwine and you can learn from, from everything that you see. Agree? Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Well, I, parting is such sweet sorrow. I have, I hate to say, <laughs> I hate to say goodbye, but I think we probably should um, wrap this up. And if you have any more questions, you know where to um, get a hold of, of Angela, you know where to get a hold of me. Let me just pop those. Um, there's the link for the uh, Academy. There's Angela's regular address. And then I would encourage you to 
sign up at letsgoso.com so you get uh, future notifications on sewing shows like this and any other sewing goodies that come along. Absolutely. So Don't forget to subscribe to Joanne's YouTube so you never miss a live show. I would love it if you pop over and do it for me as well because uh, that's how we, you'll know when it's like when things change, at least you get an alert for live shows, right, Joanne? I love that when it's like, yeah. oh, Joanne's going to be on in a few minutes and you might forget. And then there it is. You hear that ding and you and you know something good's coming your way. <laughs> and I will be posting all of Angela's contact information in the show notes that go along with this particular show. So you'll be able to just click the link and get anywhere you want to um, want to go to connect with Angela from there as well. So thank you, Joanne. And thank all right, you for Angela. Thank you everyone for watching. Good night too. and happy sewing. Mm -hmm.